Oh my lord, it's time to see what the 50 ton American laser rifle can do in World of Tanks. The tank that is highly underestimated, yet in the replays that we have for you today, the M48A5 pattern rips tanks like the 279E a new one. I already know what you're thinking, there's no way that this tank is even remotely good in today's meta within World of Tanks, but we're going to try and change your mind within this replays that we have today, and let's get right into it straight away. So obviously, the M48A5 pattern is one of the oldest tanks in World of Tanks, or at least has been one of the ones that has been lying around in the garage of many veterans in the game for a long, long time. Most people do not take this thing out but there's a reason for that, and that's probably because they think that this tank is just not good. It's completely irrelevant. There's no point in using it. But that's not the case. The accuracy of this tank is actually very, very good, and why it is the American Laser Rifle. I know that the title is, you know, it's YouTube-y, but the, the, my point still stands. This is one of the most accurate American tanks at Tier 10, uh, and there's a reason why it is a medium tank as opposed to the heavies is because it gets that high alpha uh, kick out with regards to the damage per minute. So you can constantly keep this gun firing and when you do you can end up with results that are outstanding. Of course as a starter the tank gets the best round in the game. Of course heat ammunition so that's a good starting point gets 0.35 base accuracy which can come down as low as 0.29 if you have all of the perks and all of the benefits that you could possibly put on this vehicle to get it as low as possible uh, which make it one of the more accurate mediums uh, to a degree I mean it's not the most accurate but the whole point is that it combines both alpha damage with 390 alpha with that accuracy and is definitely one of the stronger ones at the tier. Obviously, sniping Capolas of the Super Conqueror is never an easy task, but with a tank like this, it's not a problem. And you can see munching his way both through the Super Conqueror and the Maus here. I mean, both tanks not really having armor against the M48. And it's always fun to watch these tanks that most people regard as irrelevant just absolutely blitzing through opponents. And there's nothing that they can really do. I mean, 330 heat pen against someone that knows where to aim. Yeah, I mean, you combine that with any tank in the game and you're going to find it a big, big trouble within the game. But of course, Maus is predominantly not having the best armor against something like this. One of my favorite things about tanks like this is when they start taking on the big boys or the overpowered boys. And you can see here trying to munch their way through the Object 279E and it's going so well. I mean, this 279E is probably thinking, how come my broken reward vehicle isn't working this time? And it's because you've got the M48 on your rear. And when it's got the heat rounds that it does, not a lot they can do, and I mean, with the 279E bouncing off, it's almost a troll at this point, and this is the sort of gameplay that I love to see within World of Tanks, the broken tanks not quite getting their way for once, and yeah, I mean, it's nice to see an old tech tree vehicle doing the business against some of the newer vehicles in the game that have definitely been part of the power group generation, let's say. My favourite thing about the M48 is the fact that it kind of combines everything that you really want from a medium. I mean, it is not exceptional in any one specific area. It doesn't have overpowered damage per minute. It doesn't have overpowered view range. It doesn't have uh, the crazy, crazy high penetration that can make it just pen absolutely everything. It doesn't get the best mobility, uh, but it does have very good mobility. It does have very good pen. It has very good uh, damage per minute, which allows it to do everything really well. And it's where the more experienced players within World of Tanks will actually use this vehicle and find it to be one of the nicer mediums at the, at the tier. And that's exactly why within this replay, you've been able to see it played quite aggressively, obviously very well played, and coming up against tanks like the Maus, the E100, the 279E, and just farming their hit points. And this is what the medium tanks at this tier are all about, really punishing the fat ogre slow heavies that really don't know what they're doing. And you too can jump into this tank, and I highly implore it. I mean, it is a brilliant tank uh, and an all-rounder, and I mean, 
things like the E5. They're a very similar sort of playstyle tank, of course, E5 being the heavy, uh, but having a similar gun, the same accuracy, the same alpha, just slightly less DPM from what I can recall. Um, and of course, uh, slightly worse uh, mobility and stuff like that. But yes, a very, very fun one to watch. And it's why the versatility of this tank allows it to have so many good replays and why it is a joy to watch. And that's exactly why 10k damage results are possible in vehicles like this. And hopefully this first replay has intrigued you enough to carry on watching. And if you do, please do like the video. So, of course, weighing 50 tons, this vehicle can still shift in the game. And it can allow you to get into positions like you're seeing here up against the Batcha. It's always nice when you catch them off guard. The Batch at 25 TAP, obviously not quite fully understanding that people can get into this position rather quick. And in the M48A5, if you do get there quick enough, you can certainly out DPM a lot of vehicles. And that's exactly what happened there to the Batch at. Now, in the map where you typically would not be wanting to find yourself in a medium, I mean, Himmelsdorf not being the most uh, easiest tank or map to be able to make this tank work, uh, yeah, you're going to find it a little bit difficult, but this replay is still going to show how even on the worst, or one of the worst maps, I guess, to do very well on uh, overall, still can be done. The M48 is brilliant at this close quarters engagement because it has that good accuracy enough to make it very, very powerful. Uh, it doesn't have the super, super kind of German accuracy, but it does have the ability to snipe these weak points at this short and close ranges, allowing it to be a very, very good support vehicle where you can get up close and personal, where you do rely on having at least some team support. This tank doesn't really do an insane amount on its own if you're playing up against multiple tanks, but if you can keep that gun firing, enemy tanks will soon start disappearing right in front of you. Of course, if you've been enjoying seeing the M48 rip its way through a lot of opponents then maybe you could consider subscribing to the channel to see way more replays and gameplays coming soon and of course we're going to be pumping out a ton of videos that hopefully you guys will enjoy but let's get back to the m 48 because as you've been seeing during that that the tank has actually picked up 4,000 damage and it's only continuing as you're seeing him uh, pick up damage against the gorilla 15 who's overexposed himself in the center and with a good awareness in this tank you can suddenly become a all-round force all over the map you know if you're very aware you're able to divert your attention to where it's needed and using the okay mobility 45 kilometers an hour base which usually gets turboed up just to get that extra bit of speed and push forward towards opponents uh, yeah it's um it can be very very good with of course the 10 degrees of gun depression you do have opportunities to use spots like you're seeing here which is a fantastic one in this stage of the battle where you're able to get shots down onto things like the gorilla there and yeah, 10 degrees of gun depression, very good about this tank, making it even more all-rounded than it already is. Of course, using that spot again, this is a really, really amazing spot that many people don't utilize when they're up here. Of course, you do expose yourself to people on the enemy team, but it's not a big deal uh, in this later stage since you know where most of the opponents are and so it doesn't really become a problem. In this stage in the game, the M48 does not need to run because you're up against the Renegade, the tier eight American Heavy that is in no match at this point uh, up against the M48. And that's why you can tear these people apart. And I mean, even tanks like the E50 who are gonna wanna ram you with the heavier uh, vehicle, uh, it's still not able to really ram you for a whole lot, I guess, because of the fact that this tank is not the kind of smallest vehicles and hence weighing a 50 tons, it's going to really help you out when it comes to getting YOLO wagon by some of the players that we all know and love or don't love within World of Tanks. <laughs> of course, shutting down the Renegade there, really nice start, uh, kind of end to the battle and this is really where you can start farming up opponents. The M48's armor actually working a little bit. You're seeing over a thousand block damage. You can't rely on it, but it's still very, very good either way uh, compared to a lot of the other mediums. It is not a complete paper tank uh, and the turret can be a little bit bouncy. It does have a cupola on the top that can be penned very easily up here. Uh, of course, being the American cupolas as we all know. Uh, but yeah, still able to really push down and hopefully farm up some extra damage against the retreating 50B. 
Now the 50B wants to try his luck against a one-on-one -on -one fight with the M48. Not quite sure whether poking around that corner was the best idea from him, but either way, he's made and committed to it. And unfortunately, the Action X gets Amorak by the M48, just to add insult to injury about losing this game for their team. And then, of course, there is just two tanks left alive, and the M48 is going to have no problems in farming them up. Will he actually get taken out by the 50B? Doesn't look like it, but he actually makes the mistake of trying to ram the 50B, which is not necessarily the best idea. But at least it's a spectacular way to go out, I guess. Uh, but yeah, still, let's jump into the next one on a similar sort of town map. So we've seen the M48 up against the Object 279E, one of the most hated tanks. But what about it coming up against the most hated tank in the game right now, the BZ-176? And of course, that's what we're going to see. And there you go, the enemy BZ deciding that he's going to take uh, the EPR's life. Uh, from him and shuts him down there and uh, hopefully you will be seeing the BZ's life be drained quite quickly from the M48 but in the meantime the standard B has been caught out in the open and when a tank is caught out in the open the flying laser and the speed demon the tracking of the laser never misses and you can see once again the laser hitting the standard B <laughs> and this is where I feel like this tank goes from being very good to just a tank that is unbelievably disgusting for the most part and on a ridge line when you're able to just poke over against tanks that don't have the penetration to necessarily pen your turret every single time it's not no tier 10 Yeagerou um, and of course uh, been able to dominate on this right hand side granted these are lower tier vehicles but either way, yeah, yeah, still punishing them very hard. And when you are in these top tier matchups where you are predominantly one of the only tier 10s in the game, uh, you can drive the nail straight through the hearts of the enemy team. And that's exactly what you want in World of Tanks and why I've been showcasing the M48 to you today. Uh-oh, a poor little sod in the oaf ho has found himself in a position not very... Not very good for his tank. Up against the heat rounds with 330 pen. The Ofo's armor is basically non-existent. And yeah, unfortunately for him, he's, uh, he's going to feel the pain as the M48 starts unloading his grounds. The BZ finally enters the ring against the M48. And with a nice kick start, he sees a round ghost flying into him. The BZ's armor, of course, better than most tier 10s in the game because it's a perfectly balanced tier 10. I mean tier 8 premium tank. Uh, that of course you can only buy with money and not even guaranteed to actually get it using loot boxes because, you know, wargaming. Uh, but either way, the BZ decides he's not going to fight the M48 just yet. That tier 10 tank is uh, it's not quite on his cards just yet. But uh, in the meantime, the VZ-55 takes his chances and ends up rolling uh, zeros. And of course, uh, the M48 takes his life. Uh, the VZ here as well, ending up uh, in one of the positions that is probably not best for him, up against a M48 from behind. And when you can find the backside of some of these heavies, you can certainly eat their ass. And yeah, when you're eating the ass of a VZ, ends up going very very well now the gorilla 15 out in the field not particularly the best position for him especially up against the he rounds that the m48 gets because the 390 of the standard rounds is very good but the 480 of the he rounds just generate that much more damage and when you have 3000 base damage per minute in this vehicle when you boost it up even more and then you add on all of the perks the equipment the everything that you can put on your tank yeah, it uh, becomes unbelievably good and hence why you've been able to see within a few minutes of the game starting 7,500 plus damage within this game and it only compiles from here on out as the enemy team are just basically finding themselves uh, stuck in limbo against the overwhelming forces now piling up against them. Uh, and with the M48 speed and of course most people using that turbo like we said earlier as the tank is just not quite got the speed that you really want to be able to be meta so yeah definitely turbo is one of the things that you want but yeah able to push forward break that line and when you do end up being a frontline breakthrough tank the M48 is one of the best at doing that and up against one final tier 9 or oh, tier 8 tank destroyer yeah it's gonna not stand a chance and 
that's where I think the M48 is just a little bit too strong uh, in these sorts of scenarios. Now, I'm not saying that tanks should ever be nerfed. It is a great tank. It's not overpowered. It's just one that I feel like you guys should know about and hence why we've been showcasing it in today's video. Hopefully you did enjoy and of course join me back soon for some more content by subscribing and liking the video.